Greetings, folks. Today, we are going to look at an op-amp based differential amplifier. Now, we've already looked at differential amplifiers using discrete devices, bipolar transistors, for example. However, now we're going to exploit the nice characteristics of an op-amp. Here's where we're going to begin. I am drawing an amplifier. And I want you to tell me because I'm not done drawn, what amplifier, what kind of amplifier I am drawing. You might probably say that, oh, you're in the midst of drawing an inverting amplifier. Ground this, put my input signal over here, RI, RF, inverting voltage amplifier, parallel, parallel feedback. Could could be doing that. But on the other hand, maybe you never noticed the configuration of RI and RF is actually the same for both of these circuits. If I, instead of putting my signal here, if I put it here and grounded this terminal, then I've got myself a non-inverting voltage amplifier, right? Because there's the RF going back, there's RI going to ground, Maybe you want to draw it upside down. You know, we usually draw it with our eye coming down the other way. Um, but really, it's the same thing. So here's an interesting thing. For the inverting version, we get a voltage gain that's negative RF over RI. For the non-inverting, we get a gain of 1 plus RF over RI or if you prefer, Ri plus Rf over Ri. I wonder if I could do both simultaneously. In other words, like a superposition kind of thing. Could I throw one signal, one input into Ri, and the other one into my non-inverting input? Yeah, there's nothing that says you can't do that. There is, however, this little problem that the gains on these two halves are not the same. So one side is going to get just a little bit more gain than the other, right? This is like one unit more. So if I decide I get a gain of 10, this is going to give me a gain of 11. The end result is the common mode rejection ratio on this is not going to be good because, you know, if I have a common mode signal coming in, one side of it gets a gain of 10, the other side gets a gain of 11. Bleh. I want both parts to get the same gain. So how do we do that? Well, you know, you could maybe somehow add a little gain stage before the inverting side of it. That seems like a lot of work. Or more simply, just figure out how to reduce this gain. In other words, why don't I just put a voltage divider in here? Okay, in other words, something like this. Right, so here's my normal RI and RF. And what I want to do is, so th this is my non-inverting, my minus input. So here's my plus input. And I just want to put a little voltage divider in here so that it reduces the gain enough so that, for example, when I had 10 and 11, I want to reduce the gain uh, of the 11 back down to 10. In other words, I want a divider in this case uh, that's 10 elevenths, right? 10 11 times 11 gets me 10. So the question is, what are these two resistors? Right? What is the value, in other words, of the um, little divider that we have to make? Well, pretty straightforward, actually. What you want is the gain of the inverting side, the minus, to equal the gain of the non-inverting side, the plus, times some factor k. And you're just saying, well, what's k? All right, that's pretty simple because I have uh, um, I have values for these. I know this. That's RF RI. As a matter of fact, I just really care about the magnitudes of these, so I don't even really have to monkey with the minus sign. But um, the plus I know is uh, RI plus RF over RI. And I just have to multiply that by some value of k. Well, okay, so let's solve for k. You know, what is k equally? 
bleh, what is what does k equal? Well, that's going to equal Rf over Ri times the reciprocal of this. And obviously the Ri's cancel and you end up with Rf over Ri plus Rf. Well, you look at that, that describes a voltage divider, right? Two resistors. And you're taking the voltage across the Rf. So make that Rf, make this Ri. Now, so that we don't confuse which is which, I'm going to call this our prime F and call this our prime I. But basically, I want to set my R prime I equal to R I and my R prime F equal to R F. And if I do that, then both halves will have the same gain. All right? So if we come over here and we say, I am going to make up a little circuit like so. Let's say that's a 10K. So I'm going to make this 10K. Right? Those are going to match. And then, um, I don't know, 50K over here. Put a 50K over there. So this gives you a gain of 5, right? Inverting gain of 5, but 5 is a magnitude. This would give you a gain of 6, but then it's multiplied by 5 sixths, right? 50K over 50K plus 10K. So, bingo, gain of 5. Non-inverting, inverting. You've got yourself a differential amplifier. Now, the common mode rejection ratio will be a function of the accuracy of these resistors. Okay? So, you know, you want tight tolerance resistors to do this. Or, alternately, what you could do, you know, if, if you wanted to really tweak this, you could turn this into a pot, or more likely a resistor in series with a pot set up as a rheostat. In other words, the 50K, you could do something like this. And um, you know, you use maybe a fairly modest size pot. You know, I mean, it depends on how, how tight tolerance these things are, but you know, you might have something like, um, mm, Let's say you went to a 47K, because that would be a standard value. And you might have a 5K pot here. So at minimum, you'd have 47K. At maximum, you'd have 52K. So this way, you can kind of fudge a little bit on either side, right? It might have to be um, a bigger pot value with a smaller resistor, all depending on the tolerance of these components. But that would set you up with a nice little differential amplifier. Um, and you just look for the gain. You just look at that as RF over RI, right? So you're... Your diff amps gain is just RF over RI. Right? So you say, well, it's you know V plus minus V minus times the gain. There's your gain. You get the output. Now there is a nice variation on the theme that you will see. Sort of a supercharged version of this. It's called an instrumentation amplifier. And this is used where we want very high input impedance and a lot of gain. And what you can think of is adding little gain stages. So I'm just going to sketch this in here real quick because I'm going to do a larger version of this in a moment. So imagine putting in you know, a couple little um, non-inverting amplifiers over here like this. So what ends up happening is these non-inverting amplifiers will have really high input impedance. Right? You know, we've already discussed that can be at low frequencies an absolutely huge value. And then you can get some voltage gain out of these too. Okay? And then you run that through. So this thing gives you lots of gain, gives you the high Z, and then this will give you the differential characteristic. Right? So you can tweak this to get your, um, your high common mode rejection. It turns out if you cross-connect these two circuits, right, these two input sort of buffer gain stages, you can get an improved common mode rejection ratio. And um, the way we do that looks... I'm going to have to draw one of these guys upside down. But bear with me. So here's the guy on top. All right. 
And then we've got this like so. So sometimes they will draw this in a schematic as three resistors going straight down, like they'll, they'll draw it like this. And these guys are coming back like so. Either way. So you're basically, this resistor right here, this one, is essentially these two RIs. So you could, in your mind, just imagine that being half its value, and that's what you would use for the gain. This RF, then half of this, plus one, gets you the gain for this side, okay? Um, same thing over here, because these resistors are going to be matched. But this cross-connection will give you um, uh, an, an enhanced common mode rejection. So then what I would do from here is I would run these two guys into this. All right, so this comes in, and I'll, I'll just draw this really big, just because. And there's your instrumentation amplifier. So you get a lot of gain, really high input impedance. You get, if you match things just nice, you could trim out, you know, this little thing over here and get really, really high uh, common mode rejection ratio. So this is often used, an instrumentation amp is often used when you're measuring a sensor. You've got maybe a little resistive bridge network out here, and you just want to see this little differential voltage, which might be pretty small, and it might be writing on some large DC values, so you can use this to strip out the DC value, and uh, you know finally get your, your your true signal out of here. Right. The other nice thing is, you can use this one resistor as a gain setting resistor. This one resistor will set the gain for the whole thing. So what they'll sometimes do on a on a packaged instrumentation amplifier. So you buy one IC and it's got all of this inside. They will usually have an option for internal very accurately set resistors. Um, so like here's your here's your uh, integrated circuit. And they might have a bunch of pins out here. And they would say, um, you know, connect from this pin to this pin for a gain of one. Connect from here to here for a gain of five. Connect from here to here for, you know, a gain of 20 or whatever it is. And all they're really doing in this situation is they have a bunch of different resistors but they're very accurate, okay? So, you know, this is the RF value, and I got three of these. And then, you know, here's the rest of my circuit down here. So you just decide, okay, these are, these are the various pins that I have on my integrated circuit, and I just jump appropriately, and, you know, I, I get the value that I want, okay? And I don't have to sit there and, and tweak. I mean, this will be very, very accurately controlled, you know, much better than 1%. So they've, they've already done that for you. They've already trimmed out these values. So you just have to put a jumper out here and you can get what you want. And then, you know, they usually have just like an open thing. So you can just insert your own resistor to get a, a custom gain, right? So they might say, okay, you know, the, the standards are a gain of one, a gain of 10, a gain of 100. All right, well, if you want a gain of 32.6, you calculate a value of the resistor and, you know, you put in that resistor, okay? All right, so um, a little bit on the specialized side, but uh, a very, very useful circuit. Okay, so basically it's just leveraged off of a simple differential amplifier, which itself is this sort of superposition of an inverting amplifier and a non-inverting amplifier. So you're going to exploit the diff amp that's actually inside the op amp to do this whole thing, right? Beauty.